dickery dickery dock. Ooh, time to beat the clock. Time for fun is now begun. Let's all play beat the clock. Beat the Clock is brought to you by Sylvania. For half a century, a quality name in incandescent bulbs, fluorescent tubes and fixtures, photo lamps, radio and television sets, radio and television tubes and electronic devices. Yes, for homes, offices, schools and factories, Sylvania. Let's all play Beat the Clock. Now, here is America's number one clock watcher, Bud Conyers! Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Beat the Clock, the show where you're going to have the time of your life playing against time for big time prizes. Let's go over here and re meet a very charming couple we had on last week who were about to play a little football with us when time ran out. Mr. and Mrs. James Ridden of Woodside, New York. Let's have a welcome for them. Ridden, how are you? Jim, nice to have you back, fella. <laughs> See now, you work uh, on a railroad, is that it? Yes, I previously was on the railroad. But, previously? Uh, what are you doing? Changing jobs or something? I'm going to Florida next Monday, this Monday coming, I should say. Well, good boy. What, the new uh, job? Yes, sir. I'm looking for a business down there, and uh, if everything turns out right, I'll, we'll stay there permanently. Are you going to go out right yes. down with him, or, or No, I'm going to fly down a couple of weeks from now. Yes, huh? with the children. With the children. You have uh, two girls, don't yes. you? Yes. May I say hello to well, one of them? Of course you may. Go ahead. <laughs> hello, Nancy. Right there. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. <laughs> and who's the other one? Uh, Joanne, but she's asleep. How do you now? know she's asleep? Better say hello, just in case. Hi, Joanne. That's better. No, no favorites. Hi, <laughs> Incidentally, as you know, the bonus is worth $1,400 tonight. Oh, Whenever that bell Lord. rings, whenever lady is up at that time, gets to try balancing oh, those right. cups on the pancake turners. Uh, and, of course, I have for each of you uh, uh, one of these football guides and a, a pattern book for you of those uh, aprons, those Roxanne aprons. Sylvania TV has all the, the football scores and the teams and the players and the rules and regulations. It's very nice to have around the house. All right, Mr. Miss Ridden, you remember you were on the $200 clock, and it, it involved a little special kind of football. So if you both come over here with me, I'll remind you and everybody else watching just what kind of football it was. Now, Jim, suppose you step over here and get this football helmet on again. We have specially constructed it. It has a net in it, as you see. And you're going to be the quarterback, and your wife is going to be the setter. She has a supply of very small footballs in this box here, and she's going to center them to you in such a way we hope that two of them will land back in there, you see? You can't help in any way with your hands. you just got to stand there. You can move your head around any way you want her to help. But just catch two footballs, bend down, move around, help in any way he wants to. There's one for you. Take a look at the clock. See how many seconds you have on the $200 clock. 55 seconds. Are you ready? Go. There's one. That's it. Off with the shoe. Take it easy. Take it easy. You got it. A little, a little bit higher. Come on, almost. Hold it. Stop the clock. Got to pick up the footballs that we lost. Here, come on, girls. Get the footballs back in the box there. That's the idea. We stop the clock, boys. Don't worry. Get them all back in there. Are you ready? Go. There we are. <laughs> Congratulations. What's this shaking hands with your own wife here? Give her a kiss is what she deserves, especially since she's going to move on to the jackpot clock in just a minute. Boy, you got a little nervous there, didn't you, huh? A little bit. When did, I you that at, did you practice that? Did you practice that? Once, but I couldn't walk for four days afterwards. You couldn't? No, from bending over, I stretched my leg. Maybe that's what you need, you oh. know? Sure, that's good sure. for you. Why, she's out of shape, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a family, he says she's out of shape. She says, with two children, I'm out of shape. Now, Mrs. Ridden, you carry on for the family. And Jim, I'm going to have to ask you to step back over there. You can't help in any way except by holding good thoughts for your lovely wife. Miss Ridden, if you'll step up on this little platform, turn around and face the audience, and don't turn back again until I tell you to. And back of you now is our jackpot board with all of the words of a, a, a famous saying or quotation. But they're all mixed up and out of order. Now, you have exactly 20 seconds from the time I say go to rearrange those words so they spell out the saying or quotation we're after. Do you understand? Don't look till I tell you to. Now, open the curtain. Turn around, take a look. Go. All right, stop the clock. The pen is mightier than the sword. You're right, and you beat my death. <laughs> Back, 
you have beaten our jackpot clock, so let's see what you've won. Just take a look over here. It's the 1954 Sylvania Stratford with a 21-inch screen and the great new photo power chassis for photographically clear pictures in even the most distant reception areas. And, of course, the Stratford has halo light for the greatest eye comfort in all television. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Reardon. You have just won Sylvania's jackpot prize. Thank you. Now. All right, say, you got yourself a brood, oh, haven't you, huh? I just found out who they are. I think this is Pat and Mick, right? And Mr. and Mrs. Donald Amundsen from Parsippany, New Jersey. Well, how nice to have you all here. Hello, and let's welcome how them from out there, shall we? Ron, how are you? Yeah, how are you? Hi, Mr. Amundsen. Is that pronounced correctly? Amundsen. Amundsen. And uh, which is which over here now? Come on out here, girls. Stand alongside each other so I can see who's who here. Now, what's your name? Mary Catherine. You're Mary Catherine, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. How old are you, Mary? Nine. Nine years old. And what's your name? Patricia Ann. I got a Patricia myself, of my very own. Then I have a Cynthia, who is Cynthia Ann. See, we stuck the Ann in a different place there. How old are you, dear? Eleven. You're eleven. You're the oldest, are you? Yes. Do you have any brothers or sisters at home? Yes, we have um, three brothers and... My and three more. The last time you looked, that was. Is that it? <laughs> That's a big family. Three brothers and three more sisters? Does that make five girls and three boys? That's right. Boy, you're going to walk home with some loot. Uh, Roxanne, bring out a couple of those things, will you? First of all, for all of the girls in the family, one of these Roxanne dolls. One for each of them, see? And for the boys in the family, you take that for now and then we collect the others backstage. And for the boys in the family, one of these Argus 75 flash gun cameras with the, uh, you know, Sylvania blue dot for sure shot flash bulbs in there. You want to hold that one, too? Those are for the boys, the dolls are for the girls, and you stand back there now and keep your fingers crossed for mom and dad so we find out just exactly what they're going to have to do. You're personnel manager of what, sir? Austin o Laboratories. Oh, you are. That's right. How would you like to have a little record of this occasion? Roxanne, come on out with your camera. Step out here again, girls, will you? Stand in fairly close there. Roxanne, see how many of you can get in. We'll take a picture with one of Sylvania's flash bulbs, and now we'll see if we can have that for you before the show is over, okay? All right, now, Mr. and Mrs. Amundsen, let's find out what your problem is. It's a noisy one, but it should be kind of fun. Will you both come over here with me, please, on the $100 clock? Now, if you will stop off here, Mrs. Amundsen, by that pile of dishes, and you, sir, on the way over to where you're going, I want to pause long enough to show you we have a bass drum here, you see? And then over here, you're supposed to stand always behind this black line. You can move up and down, but you have to stay behind it at all times. And here is a symbol, which we want you to hold in one hand. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. With your right hand, by that knob. Any way you want, you can hold it like that or like that, whatever's comfortable, but only with one hand. Right. You understand, sir? Right. Now, in the meantime, your wife, over here by these dishes, is going to take them one at a time, bounce them on the drum, and you have to catch them on the cymbal. Do you understand? That's all you have to do. And when you have caught and are holding three dishes on that cymbal, we'll stop the clock and you'll beat the clock. But you must have three dishes on the cymbal. Do you understand what you have to do? All right, take a look at the clock now. See how many seconds you have. 45 seconds. Okay, are you ready? Go. Well, stop the clock a minute. I think you'll do better, really, if you do like I did. Kind of scale them over. See? Let them bounce on and off. Okay? Try again. Are you ready? Go. the clock. I, I, I think, really, if, if you toss them just a little higher so they bounce higher. See? See? I'll let you keep that one now. Go from there. You ready? Go. Wait a minute. Hold it. Let me get it off for you. Go. Up. Oh. Right on the drum. No. Hold it. Hold it. I'll give you one more little bit of show. Don't be so nervous now. It's all right. It's all right. You're doing fine. But the thing is, see, kind of kind of scale it just a little bit. See? Kind of like, like that. See? Okay. Are you ready? Go. Take it easy now. Take it easy. You're all right. Come on, you're doing all right. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm sorry you didn't beat the clock. The clock beat you. <laughs> You know, all, all through that whole thing, you were looking at him like you were wondering what he's going to say to you when he gets you home. Well, he's not going to say anything. We have a little something extra.
extra for you. Here is the table model Sylvania radio for you to take along with you. And here is your picture of the two little girls. See that we got for you to take home as a little souvenir of the show. And all those wonderful things you're going to take home for the kids, too. Thanks so very much for being with us tonight. Good night. Who do we have now? Right now, I'd like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. John Havco from Red Hook, New York. Well, thank you very much. Like very much to meet them. Hello, Miss Havco. How are you? Mr. Havco, nice to have you with us tonight, sir. Uh, you are a science teacher, That's right. and you are a social science teacher. You have a longer title than he has. Yes. <laughs> Where do you teach? Job. I teach in Stafford, New York. And you, sir? Red Hook, New York. Red Hook, New York. Are they uh, fairly close? Uh... Oh, about 15 miles different. Oh, that isn't too bad. And you were married uh, a year and five months. Is that That's right? right. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Are you going to keep on teaching right along? Well, not very long, I hope. You're going to settle down and raise a family, maybe? I hope so. Good. That's a wonderful family that last family had, wasn't it? It wonderful. was. Oh, I should say so. Five girls and three boys. Uh, incidentally, I'd like to pause just long enough here to remind all of you, if you haven't already been reminded, that the drive for funds to support research to, to wipe out muscular dystrophy is uh, currently in progress. And the letter carriers all over the United States have made a wonderful contribution of their own. They have elected for the first time to take part in something like this to collect from the various persons from whom they collect or to whom they deliver mail any contributions that they wish to give. Now, you can give it to your letter carrier, or, of course, you can write to muscular dystrophy and put it in the post office. They'll be sure that they get it, too. But don't forget to give. That's the main thing, to help wipe out this disease. The research cannot go on without money. No, it's kind of hard when you're badgered by so many drives, but kind of remember this one, too, will you? All right, Mr. and Mrs. Hafco of Red Hook, New York. The bonus. A count of three and the bonus. Thank you very much. What an entrance. Thanks, Madeline. Incidentally, it is worth tonight $1,400. Now, there is one little pancake turner in that hand. Have you watched this, Don? Well, you know exactly what we have to ask you to do then. You must wind up with this on that pancake turner, this on that one, uh, both of them standing there still. They must oh, both be there. Do you understand? Right. Well, they have to stay there long enough to know that we know they're there. They can't just sort of rock on and fall off. You understand? But you must do it without either one helping the other. Each one must do it independently I of the other. Steady this with this thing. You can steady it, but you can, you can steady that one with this one, but you can't help one with the other. Each one has to be in there. Take a look at the clock. See how many seconds you have for $1,400. 50 seconds. Are you right-handed? Yes. I'll give you one piece of advice. You'll save time, I think, getting the first one, uh, right hand out of the way. But you do it any way you want to. Are you ready? Go. Sorry. That's why I tried to advise you the right hand might have been a little quicker to get that out of the way. You might have calmed down. But a good try. That's a tough one, we know. But a lot of people are practicing at home now. Let's go. They go real quick and all of a sudden. And of course, that's really a plus, you understand. I mean, that doesn't injure the fact you'll be right into your clocks, one, two hundred, and so forth, and maybe the jackpot clock, which we sincerely hope as well. And uh, we'll find out, of course, what any problems are involved in that in just a few moments. Uh, uh, you, you have a home in, in Red Hook, New York, do you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is it right in Red Hook? Or? It's about three miles north of Red Hook. Three miles north. You watch our show there, do you? Every night. Every night. We're not on every night, every but night. every set. I don't know how we dig up enough studs. Right now, we're going to stop the clock. Well, I assume we have Mr. and Mrs. Hafco all set now so that even their neighbors in Red Hook won't know them. Now, this is about, did you ever play quoits, pitching quoits? Oh, yes. Are you pretty good at making a ringer every now and then? Right. Now and then. Well, come on. Let's see if you can make one in our quoits uh, field over here. Uh, would you bring out our little quoit set? There she comes. Betty looking up a little apprehensively there, weren't you? All right. So you, sir, would you step up here and have a seat in that chair? Meantime, if Mrs. Havko will step up alongside of me, I'll show you what your problem is going to be. Here is what we're going to use as a quoit. Just a little piece of rope that we bound in black tape so you can see it very easily. And uh, uh, we have here the little stake that we're going to put on your husband's head, like a unicorn, you see? 
And all you have to do is make a ringer with one of these over that stake, like that. Just make one ringer, we'll stop the clock, and you'll beat the clock. Now, you don't do it with this one. But you'll notice that there's a whole row of pies up there on top of that shelf. <laughs> and in one of those pies, there is one of these quoits. Now, what you do, sir, is you maneuver around on that chair, which you notice is on little rollers, until you feel you are right under the front edge. You have to be sort of out this way, because your wife is going to push these pies off from the back. All you got to do is catch one on the, on the, the stake, and we'll stop the clock. Can I look at the pie and see if I'm under it? I beg your pardon, sir? Can I look at the pie and see if I'm under it? You can not only look at the pie, you can eat the pie. <laughs> It's wonder. Do you like whipped cream? Uh, in small doses. It's, well, it, I, I, it may not taste as good as junket custard or something like that, but it's awful good whipped cream. Good. All right with you. All right, sir. Now, here's the pole with which you push the pie off right up there, and you maneuver around till you get under the pie, not directly under here, sir, but a little in front because it comes out that way. I'll take a look at the clock. Meanwhile, I'll tell you how many seconds you have. 45 seconds to make one ringer. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, that was a bullseye if I ever saw one. I don't mind telling you. Well, we got you. We'll have them all cleaned up. Don't worry about him. He'll be as good as new when you see him again. And right now, of course, that moves you up to the $200 clock. And with your husband gone, you'll have to carry on for the $200 clock all by itself. Now, I assume you do a lot of dusting around the house, don't you? Do you ever use one of those old-fashioned feather dusters that the grandmother yeah. used to use? Yeah. They're still pretty handy. Well, we have a feather duster that we are going to uh, have you operate in a little different way. So if you will come over here with me, I'll show you what way that is. This is on the $200 clock, remember? And here is a card table. Now, here is that feather duster I told you about. We have it hanging from a string, as you see. Now, you'll notice that along the floor there, one, two, three, four, five empty milk cartons right in a row, you see? Now, we want you to get those milk cartons one in the center and one on each of these corners where we have the little X's marked, you see? You must start with the one nearest and work your way down one at a time. Go get one, put it on. Go get the next one, put it on until you have five cartons all standing on the table. In the meantime, why is this duster here? Let me show you. Would you step back over here? You start this duster swinging in as wide a circle as you wish, and you may not touch it again until you have got all five of those cartons up on the table. If it knocks a carton off or touches you, we must stop, reset, and start all over again. Do you understand the problem? Okay, take a hold of the feather duster. I'm going to give you a little start by placing the first carton on the table for you. Take a look at the clock, see how many seconds you have. You have 50 seconds, on one on each corner, starting with the one nearest you and doing one at a time. Do you understand? Go. Here we go. Now look, let me give you a bit of advice. Don't just swing it far out like that, but try to give it, let me show you, try to give it a wide circle. See, as wide a circle as you can. <laughs> you get the idea? All right, here we go. Go. Oh. Put it back down on the floor again, girls. Come on. Try to make a circle. Try not to get it to go back and forth, but in a circle. Here. So to start, I'll start it for you. How about that? All right, you ready? Go. Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Get in there! Hurry up! 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 Now, you can't help in this one, but just hold good thought. And back of you now is our jackpot board. We've stepped on that way just a little bit. Don't turn around till I tell you to. All the words of a famous saying or quotation, but they're all mixed up. Get them unmixed. In 20 seconds from the time I say go, now, don't look till I tell you to. Open the curtain. Turn around take a look. Go. Go ahead. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. 
you didn't beat the clock, the clock beat you. What it is is this. It's the evil that men do lives after them. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often terrored with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. All right. However, you've done a mighty good job, the two of you, each one taking care of one stunt. So you've beaten our $200 clock. Let's see what you've won. A Speed Queen electric clothes dryer. With a new conditioned air fast drying principle, full range of heats, and an automatic time control for whatever degree of dryness or dampness you desire. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Havko. You have just won a Beat the Clock prize worth more than $200. Oh, congratulations. Roxanne, <laughs> who do we have now? Bud, now we have Dr. and Mrs. Gilbert Markham from Rosalind, New York. Well, a warm welcome to Dr. and Mrs. Markham. How are you, Mrs. Markham? Doctor, how are you? My goodness, you two are tall people, aren't you? May I ask how tall you are, Ms. Markham? Without, uh, without shoes. Uh, six feet. Six feet tall. Yes. And you, sir? Six three. Six three. Glad you found such a pretty nice tall wife, huh? I am, too. How long have you been married? Oh, about six years. And you have two children? Mm -hmm. A boy and a girl? That's right. How old are they? Uh, Jerry is five. That's our little girl. Uh -huh. And our little boy is two. Well, we got you a camera and a Roxanne doll, which we'll pick up backstage right after the show. In the meantime, uh, oh, there's that feather duster again. We have a little problem for you, sir. If you will come over here with me on the $100 clock, I'll show you what it is. Now, this is the same table that <laughs> Ms. Havko was just worrying about over there. We're going to make a little change in it this time. We're going to take the feather duster off and going to hook the table on. So the table is hanging up in the air this time. <laughs> now, let me show you what the problem is. It's simply this, sir. If you step over here, you can watch better what I'm going to do. Here's the supply of rubber balls, you see? Now, you may use this hand to hold the table. Only that hand can only hold the table, and the other hand is the one that works with the balls. Now, what you do is you take one rubber ball, you place it on the table. Then, keeping that carefully on that table, you get another rubber ball and steady the two on the table. Then, with the two on the table, you try to keep them on while you get a third one. And you try to trap all three on the table, and you keep on until you get four balls on that table held there by your hand. You can trap them under your arm. I don't care how you do it, but only that one hand and arm can do it. Do you understand the problem? Yes. Meantime, take plenty of time to keep watching that one that's on the table. I suggest that you not look away to get the ball each time, but watch the ones that are on here and just rope for the ball. Do you understand? Take a look over your shoulder at the clock. One at a time. Yes, sir. 55 seconds. You can hold the table any way or any way you want it. Are you ready? Go. Pulses, I guess you got that one going. That was real good, Doc. My goodness, that's the quickest it was done by any of us, I think. Took us all longer than that to do it. Maybe those balls weren't surround this time. I don't know. We'll have to try them backstage afterwards. Well, Dr. Markham, now here comes your wife, and look what we've done to her. See there? <laughs> good thing we had one big enough for such a lovely tall lady. Now, if you both come over here with me on the $200 clock, uh, Mrs. Markham, will you st uh, stand in back of these boxes here? And, Doctor, if you'll come over here with me, you operate this time in back of this black line. You're free to move around back there, but you mustn't step across. It's the only thing. Meantime, you notice we have a whole row of cardboard boxes here. Now, what you do, Ms. Markham, is one at a time, you kick these boxes through the air, hoping your husband will catch them while they're still in the air. He must catch and hold four of these boxes. Now, you don't have to have them stacked. You can trap them between your legs, under your, any way you want to, but just have four boxes, and you kick them to him one at a time. Do you understand the problem? Take a look at the clock, see how many seconds you have. 40 seconds for him to catch four boxes. Are you ready? Go! There's one. yet to go and look how we found the doctor. All right. Can you come back next week? Doctor, can you make it next week? Okay, good enough. You'll be our first contestant at that time. And right now, this is Bud Collier speaking for Sylvania, hoping that next time may be your time to beat the clock. <laughs>
produced in association with the CBS Television Network. Rob Sands Gown by Nat Kaplan. Beat the Clock is brought to you by Sylvania. This is Vern Bennett reminding you to tune in every week at the same time for Beat the Clock.